For today's video, we are going to talk about what is ratio and rate, and we are going to explain everything in details. So when we say ratio, it is a comparison of two or more numbers or measurements. For example, 3 is to 5 is an example of ratio, which is written in the form of A is to B. A is to B can be written as fraction, that is A over B. So if we are going to write 3 is to 5 in fraction, we are going to write 3 in the numerator and 5 on the denominator. So this will be the fraction form of 3 is to 5. And when we say rate, rate is a ratio in which two terms are different in units. So these are the basic concepts that you need to remember in order for us to understand what is ratio and rate. So let's start and let's have an example. On the first set of example, we are going to reduce the following fractions to lowest terms. On example number 1, we have 3 over 12. Since the greatest common factor between 3 and 12 is 4, let us divide the numerator and the denominator by the greatest common factor. So let us have 3 over 12, 3 divided by 3, and then 12 divided by 3, that is 1 over 4. And this will be our answer. On number 2, we have 15 over 25. The greatest common factor between 15 and 25, that is 5. So let us have 15 over 25. Let us divide the numerator and the denominator by the greatest common factor. 15 divided by 5, that is 3. And 25 divided by 5, that is 5. Therefore, 15 over 25, that is 3 over 5. On number 3, we have 28 over 72. The greatest common factor between 28 and 72, that is 4. So let us have 28 over 72. And let us divide the numerator and the denominator by the greatest common factor. 28 divided by 4, that is 7. 72 divided by 4, that is 18. 28 over 72, that is 7 over 18. On number 4, we have 36 over 99. The greatest common factor between 36 and 99, that is 9. So let us divide the numerator and the denominator by 9. 36 divided by 9, that is 4. 99 divided by 9, that is 11. 36 over 99 is 4 over 11. On number 5, we have 108 over 93. So the GCF of 108 and 93, that is 3. So let us have 108 over 93. Let us divide the numerator and denominator by 3. 108 divided by 3, that is 36. 93 divided by 3, that is 31. Therefore, 108 over 93, the lowest term is 36 over 31. And this will be our answer. On the second set of example, we are going to express the following ratio as fraction, decimal, and percent. On example number 1, we have 1 is to 4. To write 1 is to 4 in fraction, let us write 1 on the numerator and 4 on the denominator. 1 is to 4 in fraction, that is 1 fourth. And to write 1 is to 4 into decimal, let us divide 1 by 4. 1 divided by 4 is 0. 0 times 4 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. Let us add decimal point. Let us add 0. Let us bring down 0. 10 divided by 4, that is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 10 minus 8 is 2. Let us add another 0. And then 20 divided by 4 is 5. 5 times 4 is 20. So 1 is to 4 in decimal, that is 0 0.25. And to write this 1 into percent, let us simply move two decimal places to the right. That is 25%. And this will be our answer. On number 2, we have 2 is to 5. To write this one in fraction, let us write 2 on the numerator and 5 on the denominator. And this will be our fraction. And to write 2 is to 5 into decimal, let us divide 2 by 5. 2 divided by 5 is 0. 0 times 5 is 0. 2 minus 0 is 2, let us add decimal point, let us add 0, and let us bring down 0. 20 divided by 5, that is 4. 4 times 5 is 20, and 20 minus 20, that is 0. Therefore, 2 is to 5 in decimal, that is 
0 0.4 or 0 0.40. And to write this one into percent, let us move two decimal places to the right, that is 1, 2, we are going to have 40 percent. On example number 3, we have 1 is to 8. To write this one in fraction, let us write 1 on the numerator and 8 on the denominator. And this will be our fraction. And to write this one into decimal, let us divide 1 by 8. 1 divided by 8, that is 0. 0 times 8 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. Let us add decimal point. Let us add another 0. Let us bring down 0. 10 divided by 8 is 1. 1 times 8 is 8. 10 minus 8, that is 2. Let us add another 0. And then 20 divided by 8 is 2. 2 times 8 is 16. 20 minus 16 is 4. Let us add another 0. And then 40 divided by 8, that is 5. 5 times 8 is 40. So therefore, 1 is to 8 in decimal, that is 0 0.125. And to write this one into percent, let us move two decimal places to the right. That is 12.5%. And this will be our answer. On the third set of example, we are going to simplify the following ratios. On number 1, we have 5 is to 25. So to simplify the given ratio, let us find the greatest common factor between 5 and 25. So the GCF of 5 and 25, that is 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 25 divided by 5 is 5. Therefore, 5 is to 25 is equal to 1 is to 5. And this will be our answer. On number 2, we have 72 is to 64. The GCF of 72 and 64 is 8. 72 divided by 8, that is 9. 64 divided by 8, that is 8. So therefore, 72 is to 64 is equal to 9 is to 8. On number 3, we have 3 is to 12 is to 24. The GCF of 3, 12, and 24, that is 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 24 divided by 3 is 8. And this will be our answer. On number 4, we have 81 is to 27 is to 45. So the GCF of 81, 27, and 45, that is 9. So let us have 81 divided by 9 is 9, 27 divided by 9 is 3, 45 divided by 9 is 5, and this will be our answer. On number 5, we have 9 is to 12 is to 36. The GCF of 9, 12, and 36, that is 3. 9 divided by 3, that is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 36 divided by 3 is Nine. So this will be our answer. On the last set of example, we are going to solve the following problems. On number one, a small merchandise has 12 female and 20 male employees. What is the ratio of female employees to male employees? To determine the ratio of female employees to male employees, let us write our ratio as female employees is to male employees. The number of female employees that is 12 and the number of male employees, that is 20. And to simplify this one, the greatest common factor between 12 and 20, that is 4. 12 divided by 4, that is 3. 20 divided by 4 is 5. So therefore, the ratio of female employees to male employees is 3 is to 5. And if you are going to determine the ratio of male employees to female employees, we are going to have male employees is to female employees. The ratio of male employees, that is 5, and the ratio of female employees, that is 3. And this will be the ratio of male employees to female employees. On example number 2, a couple went out for a date and spent 1,500 pesos on dinner and 400 pesos at the movie theater. What is the ratio of pesos spent on dinner and the total amount spent for the date? To determine the ratio of pesos spent on dinner and the total amount spent for the date, let us write our ratio as the pesos spent for dinner is to total amount spent for the date. The amount they spent on dinner that is 1,500. And to determine the total amount spent for the date, 
let us have 1,500 plus 400. So let us write 1,500 is 2. 1,500 plus 400, that is 1,900. And the GCF between 1,500 and 1,900, that is 100. 1,500 divided by 100, that is 15. 1,900 divided by 100, that is 19. And this will be the ratio of pesos spent on dinner and the total amount spent for the date. On our last example, Marie decided to make a lumband. There are 4 pink strings and 29 purple strings on her lumband. What is the ratio of the number of pink strings to the number of purple strings? To determine the ratio of number of pink strings to the number of purple strings, let us write our ratio as the number of pink strings is to number of purple strings. The number of pink strings that is 4 and the number of purple strings that is 29. And the GCF of 4 and 29 that is 1 and we can simplify 4 and 29. So therefore, the ratio of the number of pink strings to the number of purple string is 4 is to 29. And this will be our answer. So I hope you've learned from this video. Thank you so much for watching and God bless us all.